So let's start with how are you doing? How are you really doing? I saw this question on YouTube. It's these short form videos. I started using YouTube recently, like a lot mm -hmm. more than I have in the past. Um, and it was such a simple question. This woman, she asks like just random people how they're doing. And then she emphasizes the really so that it's like, affirming that we want you to say more than just I'm fine right so like how are you really doing we can start there I'm gonna I'm in a balanced space of um very proud and understanding what I've done and the sacrifices I've made to be where I'm at mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. But uh, I still understand what is required of me with my anointment to get to what God has in store for me. And I take on that assignment with pride and look forward to the ambition and the fortitude that I'm going to have to develop to get there. When you say you take on that assignment with pride, what does that look like for you? It looks like understanding that as one of the quotes I like a lot is like, when there's too much on your plate, the objective was to eat, then, then I can't necessarily be upset about it. To me more, to use that analogy, it's more of me understanding what am I supposed to digest at certain periods of time and understanding like, yo, certain things don't have to be left in the tub of and that's leftovers. But certain things mm. I need right now to get through the season that I'm in or the energy that I might need from this particular food to get through this part. So I I no longer, there was moments where I was kind of feeling like, dang, this is a lot of this is too much or whatever the case might be. But now I'm like understanding that if it is too much, then I, my job also is to be, to understand to be more efficient in it. But also a lot of it being too much is that I'm not trimming the fat on the things that no longer serve me, but I'm keeping around. Um, Cause this next step of this journey is kind of like what needs to be here is what needs to be here. The other extra stuff is going to feel like 10 times what the weight is because trying to like, trying to go from like good to great and great to phenomenal legendary is these small little windows and the small percentages. And there's certain things like small, like, like Nip said, like circle gets small, everything can go and everybody can go. And mm. I understand that more than ever. And I learned like saying no or not bringing people with you has nothing to do with ego or pride or even your heart or love. It has more to do with like, yo, the, the execution, the job is to execute. And if this is not a part of the execution, right, wrong, or indifferent, then it can't go. Hmm. Does your environment play a role in how you show up? Yeah, extremely. Um, I think I was, I was in my masseuse spot and she had the book on feng shui. And like, I've always heard people say, you got to feng shui home, you got to feng shui this. But then I actually started to read it and listen to it. And like, one thing that it talked about a lot was like, in certain cultures, they don't have anything under their bed because sleeping energy and what it is, like the flow of how your mind is and your body flows, that there should be certain things in your house that move a certain way. And I say this as my house is cluttered as hell right now and I'm not following the principles, but it's like my environment mentally, eternally, it all plays a factor. Um, like when my room feels cluttered or my house feels cluttered, my mind not to my tent feels cluttered. Like when I'm outside and I feel certain energy in the Bronx or even on the train, like nine times out of 10, it's like I'm feeling a certain way. So I feel like everything's a reflection. Cause some yeah. I've walked on the same streets and been sad and been happy and it's been the same street. So I got to factor in like what, what is kind of the source of those emotions? Hmm. So for the record, are you still based in the Bronx? Yeah, I'm still based in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Uptown two and five, you know, that's where we at. Okay. 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 So there's something you said when I first asked you how you were doing and then like what you what does it look like leading with pride, right? And you mentioned something about just like better boundaries and learning to say no. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you're on this chapter and this journey now and you're elevating and you have a certain goal that's set in place, 
and you're also still based in the Bronx. What does that happy medium or balance look like with like linking up with the homies versus saying no and staying focused and grounded because you're so accessible still and you're in the community? Um, or does it look like that at all? Well, recently I've, re I've learned and seen that a lot of my link ups and the people that I'm around are still a part of the process. Mm -hmm. like, there's very few times that it's like a, yo, I'm just going to link up somewhere and we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Like, and even when I get around the bros and we sitting down, eventually it turns into like a debriefing or it turns into a consultant session or it turns into a workout or it turns into something that's helping like mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So I think at this age, I've set my life up where it's like all the, like just the leisure time is still somewhat productive. And the people that I've naturally surround myself with move and operate the same way. But I'll say recently I've said no to a lot more things simply because like I think I wrote it down, like not enough done has not enough I have not enough has been done to stop having fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? To stop like to stop doing or enjoying what I'm doing. Like, like mm -hmm. I can't let go of so like 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 how many times I'm gonna go to this party? Like how many times I'm gonna go to the, that spot? Like like I'm like now I'm going to these spots at the same spot. And there's like it may be different DJs, maybe different, but it's like there's only but so many like situations you could go to in New York. And mm. the question now becomes is like, and 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 also am I the person that I want to be when I show up to these spots? Like mm. like when I walk in these spots, it should be like, yo, you know what? I need to see that person have this conversation. Like, like when you when you're getting, when you're doing certain work by yourself, when you show up to these spaces, even though you're having fun, it also becomes business because now you get to like break bread, have fun and vibe with people that, you know what, they're going to email you tomorrow now or they're going to call you tomorrow. And, they, and they, you always on the radar, but it's New York. Everybody's on somebody's radar. But sometimes you get to see them again. It gives a different feel, but, no, but that's how you tell. Like when you go back outside, you can tell if you're doing your work because mm -hmm. you, you, see how, you see the look in people's eyes when they see you. Or you see the yo, matter of fact, I was been the, or yo, that was fire. Like, cause not everybody gonna always comment or like or, or tell you exactly how, like what you did. Like a lot of people, when they see you, they let you know what's going on. So I think that it's important to understand what to be quiet and do the work, but also when to go outside and not just like have fun, but to like, like they call it like a mark market research. Sometimes to see like where you at, like has some yeah. of the stuff you've done hit home and people like, see it and register towards it do you feel like the work that you've done hit home for for you in the bronx yeah 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 i feel like and i feel like i felt that i felt that way i feel that so much more outside of the bronx not in the sense that i don't feel like, like i feel like my community love me and um that's one thing that i had to realize that it's not common amongst everybody and I had to like cherish that a little bit more. Like two things, like, cause I got the Bronx poet, like in my bio, like when I'm in the Bronx, people say it's cool. But then like when I'm somewhere in Cali and they're like the Bronx poet, like when I'm just here in the Bronx somewhere else. It hits it. different. Yeah, it just mm. hits different, you know? And then people like, oh, you from the Bronx? Like, like that, I think that's important to me. But also in our area, like not even just that, like when I go to the bank and people's like, y'all seen you last night or I'm at the spot and the yard men are like, oh, yo, poet, well, I go on. Like, like that to me is like, and I didn't realize much of it until I started bringing people to my environment and like even just women stop buying it. Like, yo, like your people really love you. And I was like, matter of fact, wow, they actually do. Like, and I kind of like, I guess I just assume that's just what comes with it. But not, you look around, like not everybody's community necessarily like feeds them and loves them or champions them. Like the way I feel like my community does for me. And, um, I, I I appreciate that and it means a lot. I hold that close to my heart. That's love. That's love. I want to go back to like your physical spaces, right? And the feng shui. Mm -hmm. So right now we know your apartment is a little cluttered. Are you mentally cluttered? Yeah. Um I'm mentally cluttered, but I think um it's funny you talking about the other day. I think I'm mentally cluttered because that's become a safe space. And I'm trying to learn not to be that. It's almost like when, even when I have clarity, I put things in front of it just because I'm used to it. Mm. And I'm learning to stop doing that. Like, 
I constantly ask myself, all right, what's next? What do you got to do? But it's like, I know what I have to do. And I think that's a part of like just being bit like a big man and grown. It's like, you know what you have to do. Now, the question is, are you going to put yourself in a position to do it? Um, I had to tell myself the other day, like, when I was younger, procrastination was like having the time to do something and not getting it done. But now as I'm older, procrastination is not setting aside the time to do it. Because we all like adulting, we got 24 hours, like stuff, your day could be filled up, your week, a month could go by like this. So yeah. if you just sit back and wait for the free time to get something done, like we're not in a position where it's going to get done. Like I have to set aside the time to make sure it gets done. And that's just how I see it. Mm. What are some of the physical places you go in your community or in the Bronx to help you declutter your mind and tap in? Well, recently I've been going to the like, go to Sun Life for 226. Um, it's a it's a Aito roster spot that I go like they soups be helping me, like they have certain things that just kind of cleanse cleanse my mind. Um, I've been enjoying like just walking around the block sometimes, just like going outside and just walk around the block, but um. I'm trying to like going to parks has been fun. Like going back outside and playing basketball has been fun too. Like just even like going to co-op city and playing basketball, you just hearing like the young kids talking about like I feel like for too long, um, I had left my headphones somewhere and I like I was tight, but it was probably like the the a blessing because I got to finally hear the streets again. Like hear people talking about, like hear what's going on. Um, some people view it as chaos and there's times I view it as chaos, but I'm not in a good space. But if I'm in a, like, if I know I'm like sure within myself, like Nipsey talked about this too, is like, the, like, do you want to be in war with the water or war with yourself? And I feel like most of the time that I have a problem with the Bronx is when I'm at a war with myself and in the world. But when I'm at peace with myself, I can understand the chaos that's that's taking place in the city and the borough at times. And it, it becomes poetry in motion. And it, and it becomes something of like, of beauty to a certain extent. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think somewhat is beautiful because we, we see all see how New York is being gentrified. And I tell people all the time, like, like the Bronx is the last bit of that essence of New York that we've all grew up on and all love. And like the other day, like, I just came from this, like, we had this beautiful video shoot. Like, everything was amazing. We chilling, had a good time, like, did some amazing dope stuff. We went to the brunch spot, you know what I'm saying? Had a good time, got back to the car. And, like, we just see a bunch of kids chasing another kid because somebody stole his bike. And, like, some people would look at that like, that's crazy, the Bronx, the crime. But it was just something beautiful about it. Like, the poetry of just, like, him running down and, like, now nah, I'm going to get my bike. And then, like, it, it was just something about it that just, I don't know, like, Yes, it's crime. Yes, like, yo, kids shouldn't be taking other kids' bikes. But it's also, like, it, it just reminded me of a time how people used to live this way. How, like, there was just a certain space of, like, no, I, I'm going to go make sure I'm going to be all right. Like, nah, ain't nobody going to take that from me. And it just reminds me of something. But it's bittersweet because at times I'm like, dang, like, that survival, I got to go get it. Does that still serve me? Mm. Like sometimes that being on edge and the like, nah, like, I don't know, like, nah, like, fuck out of here. Like that fuck out of here sometimes be too much. Like it, sometimes it doesn't allow you to let something feng shui. It doesn't allow you to let something flow and let it grow and let the beat build to where it needs to be. So just trying to find a balance between both of that. Like the like, nah, I'm gonna go get it. And then also the, nah, I want what's for me. And as long as I grow and I evolve of who I am, when I show up in certain rooms, I'm going to know what's for me because I'm clear enough to see it. Instead of like, I don't care what's for me or what's not, I'm going to get mine. And go get in mind of what God has in store for you, I think, is a distance. One is flesh, other one is spiritual. And I've learned like the flesh can only take me but so far. Okay. So this actually brings me to my next question, right? Um, what resonated for me with what you just said is like there's beauty in the chaos. And I think that that sums up, one, everything you're trying to encapsulate just about like how you exist in these two spaces that is really one space, but like 
the the noise, the crime, the life, the survival versus the the peace that you might find internally, the chasing my dreams that keep you going. Um, with that being said, what is what is your vision of a utopia, right? Um, and I feel like you've spoken about it. I feel like we we've kind of touched on it more or less than so many words, but I would love to hear it like with me directly answer asking the question. What is your vision of utopia in this community, in the Bronx? And for context, right? I think what you said really sums up what a utopia is, is like that beauty and the chaos, that idealistic place, whether it's in your mind, whether it's physical, but that that perfect, that, and I put that in quotes, you can't see me because I'm off camera, but that perfect place that is just like so otherworldly that is so it has everything you need whether it's the greenery the the open air um does that exist for you whether it's figuratively or f literally um and if it does what's that vision of your utopia when you think about home and just like how you show up as you work towards what you're working towards yes it exists um, but I feel like it also constantly keeps on changing as I learn to know the things that, that I really want or the things that I've earned to want. Certain things I feel like early in my life, I didn't think I deserved it. And I felt like just learning more, understanding more has made me understand that like, yeah, you can want that and you can get that. And you don't have to put no label on it. You don't have to feel ashamed about it. You don't have to be quiet about it. Like, no, like, Anything that you want, you can actually go get. I think the utopia for me is figuratively is when the game slows down. There's moments even now that I'm realizing, like, imagine God gave me everything that I wanted, but I didn't realize it because I'm thinking about what I want next. And right now, it feels like a utopia because people tell me stories about stuff and I was like, wow, that did happen. But if somebody told me the story, I would be ecstatic. But when you're in it, you're just like, yeah, yeah. And the utopia to me is this, the mindset of like, no, this is it. Like, this is beautiful. Like, this is the Bronx, this is life. And like I'm saying, like I'm in the same spaces, but I have a different mindset and now I'm loving it. Like some of these blocks or some of these places, I, like I've walked, like recently I've walked in stores or been around, like I just feel like life works in the cycles. Like I've been seeing a lot of things and running into people from high school, middle school, and I'm just seeing where they're at. And I'm just like thinking about, wow. And I see the lessons and I see the feelings. And it's like the utopia is the mindset of like abundance. Like you're everything this borough, everything God has given you, everything you have right now is everything that you need. And if you're able to see the beauty and the gems in it, like you can like you can cultivate that to accomplish anything you want in this world. And that's just kind of how I, I've been able to see it. And I think that's the, yeah. And I'll say physically, it's like, as much as I've been wanting to leave the Bronx and get out of the Bronx, every time I try to go, it just doesn't. And also like these other places, I think changing my zip code isn't going to be the only thing that I, that I need to get to like the mindset or the feeling that I think it would. Like sometimes I see people move and I do feel like environment does help, but also I feel like internally the environment has to be fixed just as well as the external. And the utopia to me is that mindset. It's the mindset of like, yo, every like everything that you need, you have right now. Mm. And it's your job to see the beauty in that and, and cultivate that and grow that to, to achieve and get whatever it is that you feel like you've earned to want or whatever you feel like is yours. And not from a forceful standpoint, but also from an from an assertive standpoint of like understanding who you are and what's for you. If that makes sense. It does. It makes sense. You you dropped a few gems in here just now. I try to capture some quotes, but thankfully this is recorded so that we can go back. Um, the utopia is a mindset of abundance. The utopia is what's happening internally, not externally. 
I'm just repeating some of the things that that landed for me. Um, the utopia is when the game slows down. It's when people are able to tell you stories like that happened, but because you're in it, you don't even realize that it's actually happening. So it feels like you're you're not really in it. This speaks all of just like the utopia not being necessarily a physical place, even though this is where we physically are in the Bronx. But what I'm hearing you say is like, it's all mental, it's all spiritual, it's all internal work and what we make of it is what it is. Sure, like, it's tough because like I had a friend come visit New York and she was like, I really use hydrants. Like they really be out. And I'm like, like I had to kind of tell her like, Yo, for some of these kids, like, they may not go to a pool until they, like, 16 or possibly 20. Like, and it makes me wonder, like, if you look at that kid at the hydrant, like, if you ever, like, there's moments you stop, like, man, we're in the Bronx, I do a hydrant, she don't got this, she don't got that. But sometimes you stop and just look at that kid at the hydrant as he puts, like, his white T-shirt over the water just to let it go to spray at his friend. And you see his smile and you look at him like, you can't tell me that's not a utopia. Like he doesn't know that he doesn't like he doesn't know about he may not know about the the freaking spa castle or he may not know about the 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 what is it like the Niagara Falls or whatever the case might be a Dungeons Falls in Jamaica like like in that moment that fire hydrant is that and I think for so many times in my life people always try to make it seem like the Bronx don't got this the Bronx don't got that and it's like yeah it's beautiful to experience so many other things but. You're not telling me these other things to like expand and be like, be better. You're telling me that because I don't have it. And I think that's the part that sucks. It's like, you don't want me to, you don't want me to see the world more for to better me and better my borough. You want me to feel that way so I can feel beneath you in my borough. And that's what I always hated. And it's like, now nah, the utopia is the mindset. Like I've been to five-star restaurants on islands and like, trust me, that bacon, egg and cheese on Gun Hill Road was better than that. <laughs> and nobody can't tell me anything different. And, and I think that's the part of like loving that and understanding that like, you know, just cause y'all deem this as quote unquote better, it don't make it better. Like I, I know the things that are beautiful that you can't get nowhere else in the world except for this borough. And, and I'm not saying that from a, like, I haven't been there. I've been to these places. I've traveled this country. I've been to different continents and I haven't traveled the whole world yet. But from what I've seen, it's kind of like, yo, there's certain things here that are so special. And the kids that I teach, I try to let them know that, like, yo, there's certain things that y'all get to experience and y'all around that y'all don't even understand. Like, that right there is the creme de la creme. Like, you, like, you can't even, you can't even package that and sell that nowhere in the world. Like, that's priceless. And I think the, the biggest crime is, like, snatching people's utopia to give them, like, a cookie-cutter dream or cookie-cutter experience when it's like, nah, like, they really drift on a memory, like they living in their own world and it's beautiful. So why pop they bubble just to give them some synthetic shit? Like that shit whack to me. Mm. It's the bacon, egg and cheese on gun hell for me. Nah, I it's real. Hold you. It's true. It's real. I don't be eating bacon no more neither, but I still remember it's just the- But you still miss it. Yeah. It's the, yeah, it's like, the it's nostalgia. <laughs> the that brings me to, it, it, it does, um, cause I will not ever trade in, and I hope the same. Well, this will be on the record. Hopefully not. They cut it. Um, some chicken wings and French fries from the Chinese store with some barbecue and hot sauce because that will forever be it. And make sure my wings are extra crispy. No, nah, see them all. <laughs> that's important. Like I think that's, that's real. It. <laughs> it's real. Well, what made the Bronx the Bronx growing up? What made it home for you? To me, um, I'm always like. People always told me melting pot, but I feel like the Bronx has always actually been the melting pot for me. Like, cause I went to school in the South Bronx. I live uptown and I play sports and I traveled like even before like writing and being a storyteller, like I always traveled to different parts of the borough, traveled the country. So like at every different stop, like or that train, like it's a different frequency. And I know what to call it back then. It's a different frequency. Like they sell different things in different stores. There's different food, there's different language, there's different clothes. So to me, it's like the Bronx just like it's the ultimate melting pot. It's the microcosm of it all. Like I'm, my mom was telling me the other day, like one of her coworkers, like they don't got ting. People that know ting, ting is like a, a Jamaican drink or a drink from the Caribbean that can be associated like a sprite, but it's not. And it's like 
But if I go down there, like there's certain things that we may not have up here. So what makes the Bronx to me so beautiful is that these are all pit stops or like, yeah, they're, they're all pit stops of so many different countries and islands all in one. And it's like, even if I never been there, I can feel the culture of it at times. Like I've never been to Guyana, but there's certain parts of like the Bronx that when you go there, they play dominoes different and they hear different music. When you walk in, they're not going to see soccer. You're going to see cricket. In other spots, you're going to walk in, you're going to see soccer. Other people, you're going to see baseball. You're going to see the, you're going to see football. You're going to see basketball. Like there's different things. Like there are probably 10 different old men in the Bronx from speak that speak a different language is probably on the corner playing dominoes right now. And every one of their experiences is just true. And they're all in the Bronx. And I feel like that's what makes the Bronx the Bronx is acknowledging that they, that every part of their perspective is, is a Bronx perspective. And too many times I feel like we try to like disown each. Like for some people, like, like the whole argument of the like for some people it's curry chicken, for other people it's chicken curry. And that's just what it is like, and that's okay. That's real. So it's all about just the lens. Yeah, it's the lens. It's, it's most definitely the lens. And when you're in it, you can't see it. So when you're in yeah. it, it's like you're fighting for your own, like, I just like Jamaican this, Jamaican, like, it's like, nah, like, I don't respect us. Like, you're uptown this. When you're in it, you can't. But when you when you take a step back and you just get to appreciate it, it's like, one of my favorite classes in school is anthropology. And it's like people watching, studying people, like, understanding. Like, you get a chance to just understand that. Like, I remember, like, the first time I started in my pants sag or first time I put my do-rag in my back pocket, first time I started wearing white tees. Like, it's like that transition. Like, when do you get there? Like what? Like when? When does the outside influence start to shift how you, you dress inside? Because my dad didn't dress like that. My uncle mm -hmm. didn't dress like that. Like when does that? Like you know? Like I, I actually got the name Cito Blanco because I went to predominantly Spanish high school, and it's like I'm assuming that everybody in there is like just regular black. But come to find out, they Dominican. They um from Ecuador. Like they speak 100% Spanish, but they're wearing biggies and merms just like me. So like the melting pot, or eventually all putting the Yankee hat on at a certain age is what kind of makes it so interesting. Cause it's like, yo, every single day we do the same things, talk to the same girls, try to eat the same food, listen to like watch, listen to Lil Wayne at the time, whatever it was. But our cultures at the time was being like layered over by the things that we respected in our community. But then eventually like that culture will pop back up. And instead of looking at the culture popping up as a difference, it's something like, yo, chill, if we celebrate it, the mixture of it all is what makes it beautiful. And I think that's like, yeah, a lot of my friends are first generation. Like a lot of us is first generation in this country. So the beauty of that, I think it is just like, it's fire. It's fire. That was a solid answer. Do you feel the borough is untapped? Untapped? What do you, what do you mean by untapped? Untapped. So we spoke about the utopia. We spoke mm -hmm. about the Bronx as a utopia. Do we feel like there are parts of the borough that can still tap into what like that concept or aspect of a physical utopia might look like? Are there parts of the borough that we can show more love to that we haven't explored, that we haven't tapped into? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say yes. I'm, I'll say yes. But I also love the fact that they're untapped. Um, Cause like, no point intended, but I feel like clean water brings gentrification. <laughs> like, so, mm. so, you know, like I grew up on tap water and like when, what, a, what a tap water is at, that's what the culture is at. <laughs> so I feel like to a certain extent, I, I want to keep it a secret. Um, don't get me wrong, like it's, I've traveled so many places and I see like these cities and how they look and these new buildings. I'm like, yo, this is fire, this is amazing, this would be cool. Like I remember like hopping on the scooter the first time in Miami. And I'm like, yo, if the Bronx had scooters and when the scooters came, I was excited. But then like, now I'm just starting to see like, yo, like what I grew up on is really about to be gone. And there are certain areas of the Bronx that even my album cover like, People are like, well, you took this out. I'm like, that's the Bronx. They're like, for real? And I'm like, yes. Because I want y'all to like, because the thing is that there's a be this beauty in the Bronx, but y'all don't have that lens. 
y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't look for a moment of clarity when you're in my borough. You look for a moment of despair. You look for a moment to to, to discuss what you think is disgusting, instead of discussing the beauty of it. And I see it. Because every time I show you what you think the standard of something amazing is that takes place in my borough, the first thing you do is just call it the outlier. Nah, that can't be the Bronx. Why not? Because it's not how the Bronx you see in your face, in your eyes, in your utopia. And so to me, it's kind of like, if it's untapped in your utopia, because you're so ignorant to understand like where I'm from being so beautiful, then, then keep it untapped. But I'm always going to be tapped into where I'm from. I love that. I love that a lot. And I had said something similar about just things being untapped um, or our borough being untapped. Like it, it should remain untapped because I feel like that's where the gems come from. That's where yeah. like these these surprises, the you of the world, the um, council member Riley's of the world, the Joshua Damas. I'm just thinking of different people, mm -hmm. Tarana Burks, like just random people, not random, but people that mm -hmm. have like made headway, that have made impact, that mm -hmm. we do get overlooked. And it's nice when you just see someone coming up from the borough that's just like, oh, okay, I see you. So that definitely resonates. Um, I'm gonna close out with two questions. My my second to last question is. And you spoke about this, that you said that even if you were to sh switch or change zip codes, you would not because you feel like it's more than you just leave in the borough. So what plays a role in you staying in the Bronx while you continue to cultivate and grow and work on your craft? Be honest, like, I'll say life. Like, I wanted to move to Houston probably like four years ago. But like, life situations, parents are getting sick. So many things like altered and changed that. And it made me realize that, yo, like the city not done with me yet. And uh, my mentor was telling me that he was just like, like sometimes, it's why I actually like Soul. My mentor was telling me that by watching the movie Soul on Disney. And it kind of like opened my eyes where it's like, so many times we want to do all these amazing different things and we're trying to like get on and be here and do that. And we're not realizing that our actual purpose might be to stay here and help the next generation. Or like, like in a movie, he's trying to be on and be torn everywhere, but his real job was to help the kids. And that opened my eyes. And honestly, like, like, wow, subconsciously thinking about it is like after that movie, I ended up getting a writing workshop and I started being in the kids. I started being in the schools. And I was at graduation day, we were talking off camera, and it's like, I walk on stage and these kids are giving me like a standing ovation. I'm just kind of like, you know, all I did was listen to y'all. And and while and by y'all listening to me, y'all was able to like take the words that I was inside, because the program is like words that write you. Cause like sometimes you write words and sometimes words write you. And they just allowed that to just like spill out on paper. So I just feel like we gotta just get to the space of just understanding what it all means and what we all have to say. Cause like all of our two cents, all of our two cents matters to a certain extent. If you still have sense. I like that plug. <laughs> okay, my last question for you, um, and not really, cause I realized that not everybody might not know who you are. So I'll close mm -hmm. out with that. But the next question, um, if you could write a love letter to the Bronx, which you will be writing, we're gonna ask you to a handwritten love letter. Okay. What would it say? If I would start to my toxic girlfriend, that I didn't realize was that toxic. I probably just didn't understand your love languages yet. The way that I you, love that. yeah, like I feel like to be like that's like that's keep going, keep stuff. going. I, I didn't no, mean to interrupt. No, 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 it's like <laughs> like the way that I, the way that I had to leave you to see the beauty in you. that you still welcome me with open arms. I know God is real. 
Can you run that back for us one more time all together since I interrupted you? Oh, it was hold on. I'm trying to think. That was just a real uh what was it? I'm trying to <laughs> to my toxic to my, girlfriend. Okay, yeah. <laughs> to my toxic girlfriend. Well, yeah, to my toxic girlfriend. Well, I said I, I apologize. I don't understand your love languages yet. The beauty of understanding the grace of the hold on, I'm on the zoom. I'm on, I'm the, I'm, Dang it. Everything keeps interrupting me. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. I don't remember exactly how I said it. Uh, it's cool. Yes, okay. It was beautiful. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. It was just a... Uh, okay, here we go. To my toxic girlfriend that I didn't understand how to love yet because I didn't understand your love languages. I had to leave you to see the beauty in you. But I thank God that you still open your arms to me and you give me grace. While we break bread with extra toasted bread, ketchup, mayo, and whole of chipotle sauce. Yeah, that's all I got so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be continued, <laughs> Cito Blanco, yeah. Yeah, Blanco, Mr. Donover yeah. Appleton. Mm -hmm. You going by Mr. Appleton now? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. I've been muted. For... There we go. Is this an unveil? This is a well, quick sneak peek for the BXN followers. Peek. That's a sneak peek. That's a sneaky. That's tell a us. Sneaky. Tell us more. What are we looking at right now? That's a sneaky. This is my um my this is my debut album expiration dates. I'm coming out on all platforms soon. Sorry for the laundry in the side. We're gonna get to that. Um, <laughs> expiration dates coming out soon. Um, we I put it on vinyl because the essence of music is important, and um, it's just a different feel. Like I was just sitting here listening to Mad OJ's, listening to um, listening to Al Green, Mad Miles Davis, and I just felt like it's important to just bring back the essence of the of the word, the word mixed with. The harmonies mixed with the saxophone mixed with so many different things and um yeah, it's the album i needed maybe not the album you wanted but it's the album that i needed and you're gonna like it it's a vibe it's a, it's a utopia it's a utopia there we go it's a utopia it's giving like bxn cito blanco album release live listening sneak peek it's giving something an intimate Yo, workshop yeah. it's giving something hey, hey okay hey, okay hey. That can go on. That can go on. <laughs> Cito, thank yeah. you for today. For sure. Where can people find you, follow you, keep up with you? Okay, you can follow me at Cito Blanco. That's C-I-T-O-B-L-A-N-K-O. And that's on Twitter. That's on IG. That's on TikTok. That's on Cash App. That's everywhere. You know, tap in. Amazing. And is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Um, thank y'all. Thank you. But, um, just the platform and just always like highlighting things and, um, seeing what's going on. Cause sometimes like I look back at it, like my first, I think my first like magazine interview was with you guys that interviewed us after we did the pop-up. Like there's so many different like moments that y'all made sure that we didn't just take for granted. Like sometimes when you're just going, going nonstop and you're just trying to like, get to these next levels, get to these next steps. Certain people don't necessarily always like celebrate you, but also sometimes the publications just taking a moment to document what's taking place allows people to realize it's a, cel it's a celebratory moment. And I've always been there. I'll say like for me, on um, the champion me to also like give me a voice and to celebrate me. And I appreciate that for real. That's love. We appreciate you. We continue to cheer you on and we look forward to what's coming up next for you. Keep climbing. Keep finding your utopia. Keep rebuilding and building. Um, thank you.